Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of Rabbi Jeff's Pirkei Abashir, where we attempt to understand the meaning behind the instructions of our sages and how it's relevant to our lives today. We do this, of course, using the thoughts of our teachers before us and try to make them applicable to our times. Feel free, please, to contact me with any comments or questions at rjfromlj at aol.com. Today's Mishnah is Perak Aleph, Mishnah Bays, Part 2. Chapter 1, Mishnah 2, Part 2. Okay, again, Shimon the Tzadik, Hayim Mishyari, Knesset Gedola, who Ayoyimir used to say, Ashlai Shidvar, Molomomed, on three things the world stands, the text is in the group chat, Ala Torah, Vyala Voda, Vyala Gimilus Chasadim. So, I'm going to give two explanations, both um, short and over the course of the lifetime of Pirkei Avos, um, they will be brought up again and widened, but nevertheless, I'm going to give two, two different approaches. The first is the understanding that every human being is made up of three parts. We understand this, um, really we understand this from this Mishnah, and that it, it really develops itself through many of the things that we do. That we understand that a person is made of three parts, and, and a person, th- these parts need to be guided and trained in order to be able to, to, for a human being to achieve a higher level of existence, higher level of behavior. The three parts that a human being is made of, if you were to take the human being and split them into three, it's really their head, their heart, and their instincts, which means that we're made up of our intellect. We are made up of our instincts, our physical actions, and we're made up of our ruach, of our neshama, no, of our emotions, excuse me. The, um, the neshama is the intellect. It's really the seed of the, um, of the intellect, and the intellect is really the seed of the neshama. Our nefesh, which is our lowest part of our existence, is where our instinctual living takes place. And the ruach is really corresponding to the emotions of a person. Now, if we see ourselves as our head is the seat of our intellect, our heart is the seat of our emotions, and our body, our physical, our physical parts of our body are um, our instinct. So then we understand like this, that these, these basics of the human being are really themselves neutral. In other words, the, the head, the intellect is not good or bad, the emotions are not good or bad, and even the um, living on an instinctual level is not in itself good or bad, and they can, be, they can be shaped in a way that's positive and beneficial, or they can end up in a way that could be um, very detrimental and dangerous. The difference is where they're pushed. The difference is whether they're trained internally, they're trained towards myself, or whether they're trained outside of myself. For example, if my intellect is trained towards myself, and I use my intellect to promote my own perception of myself, I use my intellect to promote my own sense of my importance, to be able to to develop and to understand and recognize and identify my own power for myself, so then that ends up in an attitude of arrogance. If I use my emotions, also I use my emotions for myself, and I use them to concern myself with, with myself and with my own development and with my own existence. So then those emotions and those emotional reactions turn into jealousy. And if I use my physical life in order to be able to, to create for myself a system of pleasure and, of, and, and to, to please myself, so then in the end what I am doing is that I'm using my instincts to my own indulgence, and that ends up in an attitude of lust. And that's why our sages say to us that the three things, the three most detrimental things that a person has to stay away from is kina, taiva, and kavod, which is arrogance, jealousy, and lust, which is the the reason why it's those three, and those are the three midos, those are the three roots of all negative characteristics that exist in a person, is because ultimately that's taking the three roots of a person, which is their intellect, their emotions, and their instincts, 
and taking those three things and training them towards oneself. But if I take those same three things and use them towards the outside, so then I use my intellect to be able to understand and to see the big picture, to be able to recognize that there is a larger world here and that there is a, there is a larger calling and something more, um, more specific and more profound for me to be accomplishing. So then I recognize my smallness in this world and I recognize my place inside of this world, which is ultimately results in an attitude of humility. If I use my emotions in order to be able to feel for other people, so then it manifests itself in a midah and a characteristic of chesed. And if I use my, my instincts and I use my, my physical existence with control and with discernment, so then I end up with a sense of self-restraint and self-control. And then those three characteristics, those three parts of myself, the intellect, the emotions, and the instinct, are, they manifest themselves and are used for positive things, humility, chesed, and self-restraint. And that's the reason why we find everything in threes, because ultimately what we're talking to, when God says, we spoke yesterday about the development of three relationships with God, ultimately what we're saying is, is that there are three parts of myself that need to be developed. They need to be taken away from a focus on myself, and they need to be brought towards a focus towards other people. When they are focused towards myself, they're dangerous because they end up in the, the three negative keys in arrogance, jealousy, and lust. And when they're trained outwardly, when I step outside of myself, then they end up in humility, in chesed, and self-restraint. And that's what we see in this Mishnah when Shimon Atzadik tells us that that the human being is developed. A human being is an oilam, a human being is a world. And that the world stands on his development and on the, on, on the accomplishment of his development. And therefore, a person has to develop his nefesh, a person has to develop his neshama, and a person has to develop his ruach. He has to take those three components of his existence he has to take his instinct, his intellect, and his emotions, and he has to train them, remove them from himself, train them towards the outside, and then they end up in humility, self-restraint, and loving kindness. And that's what the mission is teaching us. The reason, again, why we have the threes, and you can find this in every set of, of threes in Prithi Others. Every time you find three, what you're really looking at is you're really looking at a mandate to develop your instinct, your intellect, and your emotions. We find this in the daily process of our existence. We wake up in the morning and we're, com we're commanded to put on tefillin. In essence, as far as the Torah is concerned, we're commanded to wear tefillin all day long. It's only nowadays that we've taken tefillin and we've put it into the, the guise of davening because we can't it's very difficult to focus on the Kedusha of the tefillin the entire day. Our lives are different, and therefore it's impossible to be able to keep the tefillin on. There are people, of course, that do, but it's impossible to be mandated to keep tefillin on all day. But tefillin are set up in a way in order to remind us that there are these three arenas that need to be developed. Tefillin are placed on the hand, tefillin are placed on the head, and when they're placed on the hand, they're placed towards the heart. Torah tells us, we have to love the Lord your God. Corresponds to nefesh, neshama, and ruach. And therefore, when we put on the tefillin, what we're doing in essence is that we're taking the tefillin and we're putting it on our heads. We're putting it corresponding to our intellect. We're putting it on our arms, on our hands, the place really that represents our physical and, and uh, material action and connectivity with the world, and we place it towards our hearts to remind us that our emotions have to be dedicated to God. And this is every single day the way we begin our day with tefillin. We begin our day with this reminder that this is the, the three-pronged attack that a human being has to have that there has to be a development of neshama, development of nefesh, and development of ruach. I think that if we take these three, 
and we move these three into some of the things that we spoke about yesterday, that if we recognize that everything in the Torah is in axis of three, that we can see we can see it come out clearly. When we talk about, for example, the, the three signs of a Jew, and we say the three signs of a Jew are Rachmanim, Baishanim, and Gomli Chasad. So Rachmanim corresponds really to the intellect, to the humility of a person. Baishanim is the, the self-restraint, is the is the interview that corresponds to the instincts of a person. And the Gomli Chasadim corresponds to the Ruach. What it's saying is that these three signs of a Jew mean that when you see a person developing these three parts of themselves, that's an indication that that person is working on themselves. That's an indication that a person is working towards self-perfection. That self-perfection is what's demanded of the Jewish people. You know, the rabbis say in, in the Gemara and Yavamis that if a person, if you were to see a person who was such a hard-hearted person, or a person who, who was like the antithesis of Gemilus Chasadim, a person, the antithesis of, of kindness, you would have to question the yichus of that person. Because these signs are so basic to us. The reason that they're basic is because the Torah is trained towards these three things. That means that everything, everything in the Torah falls into one of these three categories. And that means that if a person is missing one of these categories, that means that a person is not connected to the Torah. When you say, you have to, when the Gemara says you have to check a person's yichus, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is a guy, the person is not Jewish. What it means is, is that a person's connection, there's something wrong with a person's connection. We see also in Rabbi, the three... Rabbi Jeff? Yes. Can you just uh, repeat the three signs of a Jew as the red nefesh, ruach, and Shema? So which, which one is which? Rachmanin, which is the yes. which is mercy, which, which is really, right. really connected to a person's to, to, to the, the line of neshama, which is a person's intellect, which ultimately, when it's trained towards the outside, we said that, that manifests itself in humility, and that's Rachmanim. By okay. which is which is modesty, which is a person's yes. a person's self-restraint, that's connected to nefesh, the instinct. And then Gemilus um, Chasadim is connected to Ruach, to a person's emotions, which again, okay. they're trained Thanks. outside, so then that manifests itself in a sense of chesed, in a, in a kindness, in the love of others. Thanks. We find also, we mentioned yesterday, the three, um, the, the three mitzvos of uh, the, the sign mitzvos. For example, the um, Tfilin, Bris, and Shabbos. So Tfilin, as we mentioned, which is Levavcha, um, Nafshcha, and Miyaydecha, but really ultimately is um, the, the head tefillin, which is considered the pe'er, it's considered the crown of a person. So then the tefillin is related to um, the neshama, to the intellect. The bris is related, of course, to the most physical part of the, of the body. And Shabbos is really related to the emotions, which is um, the ability to be able to, to reach out and to connect to others. And it's really the, the feeling of love that we have. And I don't just mean by having guests on Shabbos, that ultimately on Shabbos, we recognize that we are a guest in a Kaddish Baruch Hu's world. And that, that we are ultimately, um, that, that we, we can recognize the chesed, the kindness of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And we can do this, we can see this in every single one of those threes that we talked about. We can see this breakdown of Ruach, Nefesh, and Neshama, which allows us also to recognize that we have to, be, we have to spend time on the development of our parts. In other words, the parts of the human being are necessary to be developed separately so that they can all integrate together to become, the, ultimately, to become the, the, the perfected um, human being. And that is the goal. And I think the Shimon Tzadik, when we spoke about the other day, Shimon Tzadik was talking to a generation that had lost its goal, that had completely lost its sense that there was, that there was this integration. They were, they were living in pre-Ellenistic times. They were living in the times of Alexander the Great. They were living in times where they were really, at this point, very diffuse, where there was the intellect, where there was the emotions, where there was the physical life, and they didn't really come together. Al-Shleish Advar he turned to his generation, and he said to them that the, the human being has to integrate these three things. And remember that these three things need to be developed and need to be focused on and to recognize that this is what builds the human being.
Okay, that's idea number one. Idea number two is um, simpler in the sense that the reason why we have threes in Pirkei Avos is because Okay, the reason why we, we have threes in Pirkei Avos is because we say that three is the smallest number that represents a geometric shape that contains everything inside. And I'll explain that. We know that God gave us three things in order to, to be able to praise him. Godol, Gibor, and Nora. That God is great, big, Godol, Gibor, mighty, and Nora, awesome. We also know that the, in, we were taught in Brachos that if a chazim were to stand up and he would say, Hakel, Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, Vaha fantastic, Vaha amazing, and he were to add on to that list of Godol, Gibor, Vinora, so then Mishas can I say, we quiet the person down, we get rid of him as chazim. We wonder that what, why do you, why, what's the problem? So he said more praises. The, the more you say, one would imagine, Areza Meshubach, the better it is. And yet we say that we're given three, Moshe Rabbeinu taught us three things, Godol, Gibor, Vinoira, and that's the only praise that we can give of God. I'll tell you, there's an amazing thing. If you look, I think in my Siddur, it's Davka, not this way. But if you look in the Torah, and you'll see it even in your Sidurim, yeah, that the way that the Uz Yashir is written, the song of the praise at the sea, it's always written what's called Ariyah Gabi Levena. Words, spaces, words, spaces. When you open up a Torah, you can always find where Pashas B'Shalach is without even knowing anything about the Torah because you could just see that it's written different. We're taught that if a Torah is written not that way, if a Torah is written words and like, like regular prose, and it's like regular paragraphs, the Oz Yashir is written the regular way, so then the Sefer Torah is puzzle, Sefer Torah is not kosher. In other words, it's not just a calligraphic kind of artistic way of writing a Torah. It is something that is fundamental to the writing of the Torah, that it has to be words, space, words, space. And then when you look down the column, what you'll see is space, word, space, word, space, word. So it looks like, like bricks. It's very beautiful the way it's written. But why does it need to be written that way? To the extent that if it's not written that way, then it's considered a not kosher Sefer Torah. So our rabbis explain that the reason why we were given three praises of God, Godel, Gibor, Menorah, because those three words encapsulate every possible permutation of what God is. When you put in a fourth, so now you have created a boundary in a way that you need to also add a fifth and a sixth because now you're defining things more. And once you start defining things more, you need to define them, and it's infinite. You can't define God. We human beings can't define God. What we can do is we can set up a parameter. We can set up a geo geometric shape that allows us to contain, to say that these points will cover everything that's going to be on the inside. If I'm going to define that shape and start to give it a more precise definition, then I'm going to have to give it an exact definition. Three allows me to keep it on the most superficial kind of definition that now everything else can fit inside. That's why we say, kolamosif gorea, that the more you add, the worse it is. Because the more you're adding, you're now starting to define that shape once you define it, you can't leave it anymore in just, in, 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 in just a, a, a unspecific kind of way. You now have to detail all of its parameters. When we say God will give a Nora, what we're saying is that we do not understand God. But we do understand that these are the points of God that we can see. And therefore, everything else is contained inside. It's as if we're saying Godol, Gibor, Vinora, etc., etc., etc. 
It's recognizing that I'm limited in my full understanding of God. If a chazan gets up and he says, Godel, Gibor, Venora, and then adds three more words, he says, I understand God better. But now he's been blasphemous because he hasn't identified who God is. He hasn't fully praised God. He's left things out in the open. And Shas going to say, that kind of person can't be a chazan for us. That kind of person who thinks that he understands God in a greater detail than what we've been given by Moshe, that kind of person can't represent us. When we write the Oz Yosher, which is the ultimate praise of God, what we're saying is, Ashira Lashem Kiga Oga Ah, God is awesome, etc., etc., etc. That's the space. Every single word that we say in the Oz Yashir, we leave a space after it so that we're sure that we're, that we're saying, we're making the statement that we don't know God. We know what we've been shown, we know what we've been told, but there's so much more behind that. And therefore, say for Torah that's written not that way is written by a person who says, no, I know God. I understand God. That's blasphemous. That's say for Torah's puzzle. You know why this group of rabbis that Shimon at Tzaddik was the remnant of is called the men of the great assembly? It's a fascinating Gemara. The Gemara says the reason why they're called the men of the great assembly is because came along the prophets before them. And when the temple was destroyed, they said, where is God in his, in his glory? Where is God in his awesomeness? And they took out the word Gibor, and they took out the word Nora. And when they would daven Shmona Esrei, they would say, Kel HaGadol. And that was it. No Gibor, no Nora. E Gvurasa, E Nora also. They would say, where is his Gvura? Where is his Naira? And they took that out. Came along the men of the great assembly. And they said, what are you talking about? That davka, the fact that they, they were worried, the prophets were worried that the nations of the world had come and destroyed the temple. They were dancing in his temple with idolatry, that they were in the place where his temple existed. Now was all this emptiness. And he said, that's the gavura and the noira of God. The fact that God is patient and he's waiting and he hasn't destroyed them yet. He's waiting for that moment to bring them down. The fact that God is sitting and watching the desecration of God in the world, and yet is just patiently waiting through the world until the right moment comes, that is his gvura, and that is his nairo'a. And they brought it back in and said, if you just leave it, stop looking for the details. Just look at the general picture. You'll never understand all the details. Keep it in the general sense. Godel, Gibor, Menorah. They returned God's greatness back to him. And that's why they were called the Anshe Knesset Agdola, the men of the great assembly. They, Davka, had that ability to be able to recognize that you have to be able to put three points. You have to be able to make a triangle. And then you can say and understand everything else has to be put inside of it. These are the main things, and inside lives all those details. First, we have to focus on the parameter, and then we can start to put in all the details. I want to give you one more explanation of three. And the final explanation of three for the day is that three represents two extremes, and coming together in the middle. Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Avram was chesed, one extreme. Yitzchak was gvura, power, might, din, justice, black and white, the exact polar opposite of chesed. Chesed is no good alone. Kindness alone is destructive if it has no parameters, parameters alone are destructive if there's no kindness and they come together in Yaakov. 
Kiteng Emes the Yaakov. Because in that coming together lies the truth, lies the Tiferes, the beauty. That's what three represents. Three represents the two extremes being joined together in the middle. Torah, Avoda, Milus Chasadim represents on many levels, and it can be done in, in you put many different things in those threes, but that those represent the two extremes that come together in the middle. And that's why we find in Pirkei Avos, time after time after time again, when the rabbis spoke, they spoke in threes, because they spoke in extremes that were joined together in the middle. Okay, three ideas for the day on why we have threes. Tomorrow we will begin Mishnah Gimel, Mishnah number three.